an elective at first to, you know, get the people that are happy to do the right thing and spend, you know, $5 or whatever just to buy a pass for each day that they're in town to park. Um, and that's all I can remember, Rhonda. <laughs> Oh, I think the last one that you had were um, about the speed limit readers at both ends of town and how important that is for uh, safety of our community. Yes, that is, because they are, um, I'm sure as you've all noticed, have not functioned since shortly after they were installed. And so um, whatever, whatever we need to get those to work or replace them with ones that are more reliable, um, I think, would really be really important for um, safety and reminding visitors and residents alike that our speed limit's only 25 all the way through town. So thank you, Rhonda and Kathy and Tom Missel for your work on the lodging tax. And I'm happy to help however else I can. Rhonda, did you have anything else? No, I guess I would just like to know how council would like to proceed um, with the projects, uh, or did they want us to go with the mini grants? And I don't know how you go about that type of decision making. Well, uh, how about we put something on the agenda in two weeks, and then uh, and that, so council can kind of think about the options. Maybe we could put up some kind of summary to everybody, and then you know it maybe it could be a combination of mini grants and and one or two of these items, um, or just go through the items or prioritize the items. However, you guys want to handle that. So this is all just kind of put it on the. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just had a quick question, um, and I just don't know, you know, in terms of financing how it would work if we are using some of our own public works crew can we you know whether or not we contract something out like such as the bathroom work um, or whether it's something that our own crew does can we pay sort of our salaries or whatever for those specific projects through that tourism fund then does that make sense so that the labor that we're paying for would actually come from tourism on a tourism related project versus the general or streets or whatever that might just be a question to explore that doesn't have to be answered now yeah we can find out for sure it seems like that would be appropriate use assuming council said yeah do the bathrooms and then we used our own guys to do it it seems like we would be able to use that but we'll find out for Another thing I'd wonder is, I mean, we talked in the in the admin um, committee meeting about um, uh, parking lots, getting parking fees as a way of um, uh, generating uh, money, uh, income, and uh, it was pointed out that in order to do that, we'd need to pave, if we we're going to use the parking lot around City Hall on the weekends for um, for a parking lot, we'd need to pave it. So I'm wondering if we could, you know, sort of, if we could use part of the uh, tourism money to pave the city hall parking lot and then use it on the weekends as paid parking, or if that's, you know, not allowed. Just for clarification, why, why does it have to be uh, paved? No, oh, sorry. Why? Why would the? Uh, why would that parking lot have to be paved? Am I? Am I not muted or am I? Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. My speaker wasn't coming up. Yeah. So, just out of clarification, why does the the parking lot have to be paved? Sorry, Kathy. Yeah, you mean around city? I'm talking about around city hall. Yeah. I suppose. I suppose it doesn't have to be. I just think. I mean, ever since I've been mayor, I've wanted it. It seems like we had some funds coming from the county three years ago that uh, that we ended up not using for that project. I would probably wait until uh, Forterra figures out everything on their end because they have that chunk that goes right through our our lot, which I would yeah. I'd be asking Forterra if we could buy it or get granted that little piece or whatever that little weird 
an indent first, but yeah, whatever. I was just I was just asking. Sorry. Well, no, that's a good idea. And uh, and I and Kathy, I, you know, I think that using money like that for this kind of project is probably appropriate. But uh, putting asphalt down is really expensive, so I don't think forty thousand would even pave what we need to pave. Okay, so, well, that solves that problem. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I remember we got the money from the county. It was like 30, and then there was another 30, and we were trying to combine some of them to make the lot. And one of the commissioners uh, said we could not do that. And when we realized how much it cost, we're like, well, I guess we can't do the project at all. Bubba brought up today, too, a, uh, a, a road sweeper, a, uh, a street sweeper um, that is possibly being sold from the state. Um, is this something that we could go to with uh, lodging hotel motel taxes to have our downtown cleaned and sweeped? No? Okay. Probably not, I'm thinking. Okay. It would be something I wouldn't mind looking at purchasing, but I don't think we could use these funds for that. Okay. Hey, Mayor. Yeah. Do you think it's possible when you create that list of those four or five items that we just put a little, uh, maybe Theo could help or somebody could help with a little bit of budget to them? Because it'd be great if we could accomplish a, an affordable parking lot by adopting that property and maybe get a couple things done, like the, the parking slot thing that, that Lee is talking about, because that parking is sort of already self-generated around the park. Um, but it'd be great to see if we can get multiple options that we could use some of that money for rather than just one big item, unless it was a big impact item. I think there's just lots of little things that would be great to see if we can um, improve uh, around the city, not just one item. If we can sort of put budget so it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense. Okay. Estimated, sure. Okay. Okay, then let's move forward here, Council. Uh, next up, we've got uh, the Nature Conservancy. Is going to speak to us? I'm not sure if it's Tonya or if it's or Darcy. Hello. Give me just a moment to share my screen. I prepared a slideshow to go along with my presentation. Um, okay, wonderful. My name is Tonya Mori, and I serve the Nature Conservancy as an AmeriCorps member doing volunteer outreach and recreation stewardship work. And I am accompanied by my supervisor, Darcy Pescura, who will be supporting me should I need it this evening. Um, and thank you for uh, allowing us some time to uh, share with you about some upcoming fuels reduction projects that will be happening on the Clay Island Ridge um, that uh, will include some trail closures for recreation. Um, so, back in 2014, the Nature Conservancy, in partnership with the Forest Service, conducted a study uh, to evaluate the forest health in eastern Washington, and they found out of the 10 million acres of forest in eastern Washington, 2.8 million of those acres need restoration, and at our current pace of restoration, that'll take about 53 years to complete. Um, and this study helped uh, to inform the 20-year forest health strategy for Eastern Washington that's used by a collaboration of land managers. Um, and you can see here the red crescent. Um, this is where forest restoration is the most dire. Um, and the Clay Island Ridge has actually since been uh, noted as a priority area for restoration. So historically, our forest look like this with around 60 to 80 trees per acre with lots of space in between. Um, but it's common forest uh, management practices of the last century and 100 years of fire suppression have uh, caused our forests to become overgrown and overstocked. Um, and in a forest like this, we have what are called ladder fuels. So shrubs and smaller trees that should a fire roll through this forest, um, that ladder fuel will help uh, bring that fire from the floor up into the crowns of the trees, creating a, a severe fire. And when a severe fire burns through, uh, the trees are much less likely to survive. Um, whereas in this historic forest, uh, where there's gaps, there's less ladder fuel, and the fire, if a fire were to roll through, it is much more likely to stay on the fourth floor and be low severity, uh, giving needs a better chance at surviving, uh, especially the larger and established. So 
uh, in order to restore the forest, you need to thin trees and shrubs that are below this red line here. And to help restore our forest, the Nature Conservancy mm -hmm. is going to be beginning two separate um, field reduction projects on the Clay Ellen Ridge. Here in these green polygons, you can see previous mastication units that people have already completed. And in this orange uh, polygon right here, we'll be continuing that mastication project with a new unit. Um, and starting around the same time, over in this yellow polygon, we'll be starting a commercial fuels reduction unit. Um, so our continued mastication unit will be 116 acres uh, starting around mid-April. This machine over here is called a masticator, and this pink in the front chews up small diameter diseased and dead trees as well as shrubs, um, which then eliminates those fuels. It breaks it up so it increases its surface area so that it can quickly decompose and quickly reduce its um, And you can see here in this before and after image uh, quite the difference um, before and after. And our commercial thinning unit will be 340 acres. Um, it will be starting around uh, early May, um, and we're happy we were able to uh, secure a local contractor from the Tianaue, um, so who will be removing economically viable trees using heavy. So, a masticator and heavy equipment means that they'll be flying and falling trees in the woods, which is dangerous. Um, so we will be closing trails, including Main Ridge Road, Alliance Road, Rat Pack up and downhill, the uh, Grotto, Beer Can, Metal Traverse, and Canyon Switch Traverse. Uh, the Main Ridge Road and Alliance Road will be used as the haul routes for the loggers. Um, fortunately, uh, with the work that the Towns to Pianoe group has been putting in and building trails, there are alternate routes um, that folks can use should they choose to recreate up on the ridge. Um, and we'll be working with our contractors to prioritize work around the trail so that it can be completed first, um, so that we can open them up when it's safe and hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, and we'll have trail closures posted on the ridge as well. Um, we'll be keeping our Facebook page up to date for people to refer to uh, for information when they're planning their trip. Um, so these are some notes about how we plan to notify the community and recreators in our area. Um, I mentioned we'll be making trail closure signs that will be accompanied by yellow tape strung across the trail, so uh, people will definitely know they're closed. Uh, also making informational posters to be hung around town as well as in uh, various businesses. Um, and we've been working internally with our marketing team to create a fact sheet and press release for the Northern Kittitaw County Tribune and the Ellensburg Daily Record, um, as well as a blog post. Um, I listed various uh, groups and businesses and people that we plan to outreach to. So if you see any anybody that's missing on this list, please let me know and I will take note and be sure to outreach to them as well. Um, that's all the information that I have to share with you. I will leave it on this map so that you can digest it a little further if you'd like to. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, that would be a great time. Thank you. This is Darcy, can I chime in for just a moment? Please. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to mention, you'll also notice that there's a polygon in there showing the uh, 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 work or the, excuse me, the forest work that's happening in the Roslyn Urban Forest. Uh, Tanya and I presented this information to the checkerboard, or, sorry, to the uh, CAC uh, maybe a week or two ago, and we're asked since we're doing this outreach work, if it would make sense to include that on this map. And so that's why you see that here. Um, so we're doing our best to, you know, make sure it's communicated that is not a TNC managed project, but it certainly has similar um, access um, impacts. So we uh, included it for that communication purpose. Thank you guys. Uh, Council, any questions? No, this is Leah. I just wanted to say thank you, um, Darcy and Tanya and Nature Conservancy for um, letting us know about what's going on and then also, um, you know, indicating that there's work going on in Roslyn as well, um, just to help keep everyone safe and informed out there. I appreciate it. Thank you.
I'll also come in. Sorry, I, one just one last update. Um, uh, since the mastication is slated to be complete by July, uh, one of the actions that Tanya is planning to take before her AmeriCorps appointment is up is to update this uh, fact sheet and map and outreach materials uh, moving forward, um, reflecting that those trails have been reopened and um, and so this polygon will really show. Uh, the Halgo unit on the right side of the map ongoing, but the other work will be shown as complete and those trails as reopened is our, is our plan. Cross, on, cross our fingers and knock on wood. That's great. All right, thanks you guys. Um, so we haven't updated the agenda template yet, so citizen comments I'm gonna be putting after the announcements of presentations. So I would like to remind uh, Council that there is a bunch of emails and co and written correspondence uh, on the on the town cloud, and I'm, I would assume or I hope that you've all read those already. Um, and now we will move on to citizen comments so that people can discuss uh, whatever they want within the three minutes. And I'll just take them in the order as presented to me. Uh, so first up will be Doug Kilgore. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Doug. Okay. Yes, Mayor and Council, this is Doug Kilgore from 145 North 5th Street here in Roslyn. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak tonight. I've got four items I'd like to bring to your attention. First, I'd like to ask members of the Council and the Mayor to read the project description in the Critical Areas and Floodplain Permit, which is relied upon in the City's most recent Forest Practices application. The SEPA document enabling this permit is described as logging and thinning urban forest zone through long-term forest practices application, which is otherwise called the LTF, LTFPA. I'd like to point out that this permit is for that forest practices application alone and not any other forest practices application. Therefore, the city is proceeding using but the city using it, uh, proceeding using it for a different forest practice application, it is not in compliance with SEPA. So the whole uh, application is defective to that extent. Secondly, uh, I understand that two new people have appeared at meetings of the Citizens Advisory Committee and have voted at these meetings. But these meetings, and these people may have been appointed by the mayor, but their appointments have not been approved by council. Therefore, they're not properly seated as members of the CIC and the, the city is not in compliance with the land stewardship plan that governs these appointments. Ask the city to correct this matter. The third item, the city has taken action, has taken no action to date to conduct bird and plant monitoring in the Roslyn urban forest. This is a piece of work that was planned to have been done last year and in any case needs to be started in the spring months. Nevertheless, no funds have been budgeted for this work. No contractors have been engaged. I'd ask the mayor and council to appropriate the needed funds and to direct the CAC to move ahead with this work immediately. So finally, um, th this is just, uh, this last item is just a helpful su suggestion. At the admin meeting tonight um, or today, I understand that members discuss sources of new revenue and a desire to gather revenue from out-of-town visitors. I'm asking the council to consider application of a 5% local lodging tax that would cover uh, visitors' stays in local hotels, short-term rentals, both registered and unregistered. Other cities have such a 5% tax in place. We could have it too, and it would directly go to um, defray some of the costs and expenses of tourist impacts on our city. Thank you again for the chance to speak. I'll uh, get off the line and let others uh, participate. Thank you, Doug. Uh, next up this evening is Ellie Ballou. Can you hear me? Yes, Ellie. Hello? Can you hear us? Okay. Sorry, this machine keeps talking to me about unmuting. All right. 
Um, I've Ellie Balloon, 145 Fifth Street also, and I have one very simple comment, which is that as the city proceeds on this new FPA, which has not yet been approved, the city is exposing itself to litigation, which will involve both delay and future expense. I would suggest withdrawing the new FPA and pursuing the forestry activity to address the beetle kill under the long-term application and in compliance with the LSP. I suggest reviewing and incorporating comments from Angela McPhee, Conservation Northwest, and myself. And I had Conservation Northwest comments from 2018, which were presented to the city um, and not in any way incorporated in terms of action. Um, Michelle sent me an email saying they're filed under the CAC's documents. However, they are correspondence to the city. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, next up is Joe Peck. Hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, Joe. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is Joe Peck, 107 Fifth Street Alley, and thank you for the opportunity to comment. I'd like to comment on the clear well, but I would like it not to be taken away from my citizen comment time. I was there when the clear wells were built in 98. I did not observe every minute of construction. Um, but I, anyway, I have a few things to say about that one. Anyway, I listened to the special meeting and I was uh, amazed that your engineer Theo said that that clear well was only a 30 year life tank. When we built it, and I sent this in as a written comment, we got a 40 year loan from USDA. We hoped the tank would last longer than 60. Also, I recently saw pictures that Mike Woodwell had of the inside and the partial epoxy coating that was done. I'm not as sure when, but there's no major defects. There's no exposed rebar. Um, as far as the um, inside of the tank or the outside of the tank, that concrete was poured when the weather was hot. And Mount Baker saying that the concrete was bad, you didn't expect them to say it was their fault. Um, anyway, we had problems with tanks because they were poor concrete poured in hot weather and some of the contractor work, they let the rebar fall or they let the mix fall through the rebar and there were rock pockets and uh, um, they didn't necessarily cure them properly by applying water or the sealant. So we didn't have problem with the tanks, but we did with the filter bed. So, Gray and Osborne won't sound off on it because they're not your engineer anymore. They will not give you an opinion because they're not your engineer. So anyway, well, my general comments are, um, I listened to a special meeting and I would say, please just fix the leaks inside that tank. Mike seemed to think he could do it with just the epoxy that you have on hand. Also, please apply to USDA and borrow as much money as you can to fix both that old lead jointed 1910 transmission line. Please don't spend any money x-raying lead joints from 1910. It makes no sense. If you can get money, $2 million of construction money for a user rate impact of $7 per customer per month, it's worth doing. It may cost more than that. It might be $14 per customer per month, but you could build a transmission line if you can use ductile that might last 200 years. So please, you'll never get lower interest rates. I looked on the internet, the lowest interest rates in the history of the United States of America, maybe in the history of the world is right now. 15 seconds, Joe. Anyway, please apply to the USDA funding. I talked to you about this last July. Eight months have gone by and no application yet. And only a minuscule amount of 400000 when the FCS group plan said our capital program needed $4.7 million. Next up is Cordy Cook. Yes, we can hear you, Cordy. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, in, your, in your packet, I believe, is a letter that I submitted to the City Council uh, yesterday. 
And uh, um, I appreciate very much uh, receiving a response back from staff uh, informing me that the uh, uh, pipe project to the reservoir had not been, or to the intake pond had not been taken off on this, that, and it hadn't been decided. And so I guess, um, with all due respect, I would remind the council that not taking an action is the same thing as not doing it. And so I would encourage you to please to move forward on the pipe. I, I really want to move uh, move uh, forward with, at a time when we could actually do it at a time that's you know convenient and and and, and relatively inexpensive for the city. Uh, Joe, Joe is exactly right. That never been a better time to borrow money for a capital improvement project, especially you know one that's critical to every function that we have in the city. And so I, I guess I, I'm, I'm encouraging you to please move forward on that. And then also, I think, you know, 21 trees per acre, that's way too few. You know, honestly, it really is. It needs to be more, more. And I'd like to support the, what, what Ellie said, what Doug said, and I'd like to support what Peg is about to say. And I yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. Okay, Peg, you're next, then. <laughs> okay, hey, hi. Uh, Peg Bryant, 117 5th Street Alley. I think we have our 5th Street cohort working uh, <laughs> on behalf of the city tonight. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I sent the um, long accounting of CAC's um, historical accomplishments because I, uh, I sensed uh, from uh, Nolan and Jeff's reaction some um, last meeting, some um, feeling that the work they had done over the past year was not appreciated. And I've got to say, I understand that feeling, if I'm interpreting it right, and even if I'm not, I have that feeling of the work that CAC has done in the past, and I've already communicated that to you previously. So I wanted to just uh, summarize those lists of accomplishments that have been presented to council since CAC's first year, of two, which was 2009, that you have. So I just kind of like you to I don't skim it, whatever you want, use it as fire starter, I don't care, but I would like you to see that we have been busy. And I think that all, the, and we worked really hard on the long-term FPA and to have it discounted um, is disconcerting. And I wanted to read Angela's letter because I know it didn't get in the packet and I think it's very important. Um, you may, she wishes to express her gratitude, it's Angela McPhee, uh, and her deep interest in the forest. And I guess, I'm not sure how much time I have left. Um, About a minute talked, 30, and, and all of council has that letter already, just so you know. Okay, okay, so I just, I know that you may not have had a chance to read it since you got it today. So um, she uh, mentions that the city's old FPA was approved in 2017, and again, talk, speaks to the time, energy, and funding that went into it and uh, identifies those items and then talks about the unfeasibility of two FPAs working simultaneously and questions that she hopes that the council will consider uh, are the following. Why does the new FPA not include all the extensive work that was done for the old FPA? Second question, does the need for withdrawing the old FPA mean the new proposed actions allow for more impactful groundwork to occur and the new FPA is a way around this? Um, and then she wonders if withdrawing the old FPA uh, is a fiscally responsible action and uh, maybe there's a way to work within the old FPA. And then um, worries about the slash treatment plan uh, that it identifies a date of uh, December 31st, 21, or leaving slash out. There's two different dates here, but they're only 10 days apart. Uh, but you know, that, that was our problem before. The slash was one of our problems before, was the slash was not treated at the landing as required by the contract, and then it wasn't uh, followed up on. So uh, again, that's the monitoring issue that uh, is a concern as well as how are we able to assure that the work in the contract is done before payment is issued. So um, thank you for your time and uh, work mm -hmm. and appreciate you. There you go. Now let's go. Thank you much, Fred. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh, I appreciate volunteering. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Hi, Peg. I just beat it. I have to I'm sorry. Okay, so next up, we've got, we're moving on to unfinished business, and so it'll be a discussion of the capital improvement priorities that we talked about on Thursday. <coughs> um, Nolan, do you want to kind of lead this, being a public works committee head? Yeah, I can, uh, not to be repetitive from Thursday, but I, I, st I still... Uh, go with the priority list that we all recommended on Thursday. Um, being the clear well, I, even seeing this new option to save from possibly putting in a new clear well, save some some money on that that can go into other projects. Um, I do see a clear the clear well trying to figure out these leaks and stopping our money loss um, because right now the transmission line isn't leaking anymore thanks to uh, the crew and the help of Theo and Mike and Jeff um, and Titan Earthworks that we are leak free as of right now knock on wood with our transmission line but our clear well our money water is still leaking really really good um, so I still think that we should find a cure or a fix all or whatever it is for the clear well um, and then after the clear well um, or actually the first thing was the pressure relief system because we have to have some kind of shut off and sh turn back on valves to help uh, minimize with uh, with hammering water hammers or even if we want to repair some of this water transmission line we don't have to shut the whole thing down uh, we can make it so we can shut down portions of it at a time I think that still is number one priority uh, to help our water transmission line. I think our clear well, we're just letting money literally wash away, um, which needs to be fixed. And then the money that's that we still have as a priority three is replacing some of our transmission line. I don't know why people keep thinking that we don't want to replace the transmission line because we do. It's just funding. And if we can pull out 1.2 or 2 point whatever million dollars, um, I think we still look at the priority of the pressure relief, of the clear well fix, and repairing some of the transmission line, probably closer to the intake than anything, which is probably going to be a little bit more expensive, but closer to the intake or to where we left off going over the Sunkadia part. Also, I'd like to know, I know we've talked about it and I've heard that Sunkadia was supposed to replace some of the transmission line. I don't know where that's at or if that's any truth but i'd like to know how much they would like they would be replacing if any um but yeah that's my th top three priority list that again the water transmission line replacement is part of it i don't know if we need to do the whole thing because again it's not broken uh go look at the seals that we have in the logging contracts because of uh the fpa that you guys passed uh the logging contracts had to be altered uh, michelle do you want to speak to that real quick yeah, so there's just minor updates um, in reference to the new FPA and the language in the new FPA. So these actually go with that new FPA rather than the old um, long-term application. Can I get a motion to pass the new contracts? I'll make a motion to approve the new logging contract. Second. Oh, I'm muted. Second. Any discussion here, Council? Yeah, the... Um, no, sorry, after you. Sorry. Uh, well, just once again, this is the same... This this allows logging during the beetle flight period, which will actually increase the amount of devastation and death of, of the pine trees up there. So we will... We'll, you know, you log right now. Two years from now, you're going to have a bunch more dead trees. So I think this is a really, really bad idea. Uh, the public comment was brought up earlier that we're not compliant with the FPA that we currently have. Is that correct? Did I hear this right? Or is that the one that we're, vo we're voting on right now? That comment was so from... So we had the long-term long application, and then DNR requested that we withdraw, well, that we file a new three-year FPA, which once approved will get rid of the, the long-term application. 
So these contracts are just updated to go with that FPA instead of the old long-term FPA. Is that what you're asking, Nolan? So is the old FPA non-compliant and that's what the comment was about and the new FPA is going to fix that? So, Sorry. yes, it was a processing error on the part of DNR and so that was why they requested that we, that we go this route so that everything would be um, processed correctly on their end. Okay. I do hear uh, Councilmember Cook's complaints about the Beetle flight. I that does that does worry me. Um, I know we had the professionals say that 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 would be a concern if we weren't in an emergency outbreak, but we are in an emergency outbreak. So it's kind of like, what do we do? Do we sit back and wait another year and? see more devastation or do we go through this process and like you're saying in two years see more devastation possibly so I, um, I still go by what the professionals said is saying you're in an emergency and you need to get those out of there now um, I'm just I, I'm torn by it that's my I know we're getting later and later in the season and that means yeah the bug flight pattern will will be more dominant so I don't yeah I, that's a tough one where, what do we yeah, do? do we... I, I thought the uh, the consensus had shifted to um, that the CAC and uh, that when we had that joint meeting that uh, that they were on board. So what's what, what's happened now that's different? What what has it changed? Can someone explain well, it nothing, to me? Nothing, nothing's changed, Derek. The, the FPA change the DNR requested required us to change the logging contract slightly, which then requires us to bring it back to council. CAC is still on board, and council voted six to one, I believe, on the last one, and there's very little change. Just it just to line up through the new FPA through the DNR request. Okay, thank you. What I understood at the CAC meeting was that they would be on board if the DNR entomologist said that it was okay to log during the beetle flight period. Um, Kathy, this is Leah. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you here. Yes. Um, I sent an email to Glenn and I sent it all to you. I sent that to CAC. Glenn is not going to give an outright blessing, but as Nolan pointed out, we're in an emergency situation, or I'm sorry, we're in an urgent situation. And uh, the consensus, certainly from CNR that I've heard is um, that we need to remove trees. And the longer we wait, the less merchantable trees there are. Um, that's kind of the economic reality of it. So we're, we're not going to get a blessing from anyone. Um, but I think that, you know, as Nolan already pointed out and in that email, you know, he, he's saying it's not a typical way to go about things, but you're not in a typical situation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we don't, you know, there's, there's no guarantees on anything, and um, at this point, I feel like inaction is the worst choice. Well, what Derek actually asked was what it, what CAC had um, had to say about it, and that's what I was responding to. CAC said that they would they would go with it if Glenn Kohler said go ahead, and he did not. That's what I was responding to. Okay. He did not, or he said it was that you know. I mean, I, I don't understand that. That's it's, that's an up or down vote on his part, and it doesn't sound like that's the case. Yeah. So he didn't we, provide it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say. So um, we had this discussion, and, and um, Leah got Glenn Kohler's input when we when the FPA application actually came before council. Council did. Um, move that forward. So that has been submitted to DNR now. So the, the contracts are just the second component of that. Um, so yeah, he, he didn't necessarily give an answer one way or the other. He just gave some commentary and that was discussed at that last meeting when um, the council chose to approve the app or I mean approve the application to be submitted to DNR at that time. And that has since happened. So we have moved forward and this is just the second component of that so that we can get everything, all the ducks in a row, I guess, is the best way to put that. Okay. Any 
any other discussion here, Council? Yeah, it was brought up, and I think uh, at a public comment, Angela McPhee, I think, might have brought it up, is uh, why not spending a little bit more money so we're not just doing skid trails and uh, tearing them out by on the ground? Um, is that still a possibility? I, I know we're, uh, I think we're penciled out to to be on top on this one by a little bit. Um, is there a way to uh, see if we can be less abrasive to the forest i, I i'm i, I kind of I, I agree with that comment but then i looked at the uh the original forest activity that went up there and I, I didn't see too much except for uh the report that we got in our packets of that one uh embankment on the road and then there was one landing that was left that w should have been cleaned up but uh is that still an option or are we sailed past that well nolan i i, I think that our current vendor uh the equipment he has would not uh, it would be the more abusive, if you will, as far as uh, tearing stuff up. But I believe he was involved last time, so it's basically the same equipment we used last time. Okay. Um, we could pay probably a lot more to get a different contractor up there, but you know we only had one bid. Yeah. So I you know I don't starting over. You know. Yeah. Is, is probably not going to happen. Please. I mean, unless you guys reject this contract. No, I'm, yeah, I'm okay. I'm, I, yeah, I just keep looking at those dead trees and I just, yeah, I know we need to do something. Well, yeah, there you go. And, and like you said, you know, ultimately when it's all said and done after the last job, you know, it's, it's healing and, you know, and what, if we can get in here and do this right this time, you know, we can really let it start healing and, and do maintenance every five years or whatever and, and really get the forest, you know, where the LSP really has as a goal. So ultimately, uh, all in favor of passing the logging contract, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay in your name, please. Nay, this is Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, next up, uh, we've got a draft for the Wildlife Prevent Prevention Ordinance that has been, I think, before you before. Uh, the changes have been made. Michelle. Yeah, so you guys have had this before you before. The attorney, um, she didn't get her comments back to me, so I don't have that for you. But this is um, this is the second time now it's been in front of you guys. So if there's something that you see in there that you want to explore changes on, now is the time to say so. So the next time it comes before you, it will be for actual adoption in April. With the attorney edits, once I have received those. Yeah, Michelle, on the fencing one, I've got it circled. That's a. I have a question on the the fencing to the house um, shall be made non-combustible uh, within five feet. And so I'm curious, what is that non-combustible that reflects to our historic look from the front of a home? Um, it's not wood. Know, off the top, I, I think you actually can still use wood with the special coatings. So um, I'll have to look at that again. I can look at that and get back to you. I don't, off the top of my head, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, it's been a little while since I looked at that now, but um, I believe you actually could still use wood, actually. It just had to have an appropriate coating put on there annually. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just reading through. I have the old draft that I printed out and already highlighted through. I haven't been able to print the new one yet, but... Um, that was the first thing I noticed. And then is there still discussion of what's so-called a green card about a charcoal barbecue if you pass the inspection? Is that still something that you're thinking about putting in there? Uh, yeah, so that's still in the draft. Um, I was okay. kind of waiting to see what the attorney's opinion of that was. I, I don't know how. Okay. I don't know how we would actually enforce that, but um, there's a, yeah, there's a couple of those items that, that we still need to run by the attorney, and I'm yeah. guessing those are items that she'll flag as probably not being exactly how they should be worded. So, so do I have a couple of weeks to finish going through this and send my highlights in of my concerns? Yep, yep, yep. Now is that, yeah. that's, you have it before you force. So if you guys have every, yep. anything, you want to send them to me individually, that's totally fine. I'll get okay. the attorney edits, and then we'll come back with another draft. Um We'll actually come back before you in, yeah, I guess it'll be April um, with the final draft. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other I had discussion a question. on me? Yeah, please. 
Yeah, um, I would echo what Jeff was saying about the fence uh, issue next adjacent to the building. Um, and then, just so I'm clear, are these these are rules for new construction? Um, yeah. So the, this is part. Yeah. Yes and no. Um, it would actually also be for existing. So some of this would be the goal was to both encourage new development to be set up in a manner that would allow for a more fire wise friendly site and then also to encourage existing and that's where that green card comes in that Jeff was talking about encourage existing to do some cleanup to earn benefits on, on the other side of that so um, it's twofold to be honest with you um, and the enforceability of the language that's what I'm kind of waiting for the attorney so she will she will edit that so that it's actually a for, enforceable on both sides um, it's not something that we probably are going to be going around door to door and telling people they need to clean up their site, but those that wish to do so on an existing site would gain some benefit for that, um, as Jeff was kind of referencing in there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michelle? Yes? Can you provide, um, it says the newly planted vegetation within 30 feet of a building or deck not included in the species, included in the city of Roslyn prohibitable flammable plant list. Can that be provided, please? Um, yeah, I can get that. Okay. Anything else on the wildfire prevention discussion? All right, thank you, Council. Uh, so last up, we've got the Council concerns. I I'd like to start here. Um, on, the, on the subject that's been brought up a couple times now, on the, on the CAC appointments that I have done, um, it does say on the LSP, and I've always known that, that uh, Council does need to approve my appointments. And, uh, you know, in three years, uh, that we've never done that. Um, and not for any purpose or reason. I'm certainly not trying to exert power that I feel that I have that I shouldn't have. Um, so, But I will say that every member of CAC that's on right now was not approved technically by council. So going forward, we uh, will, I will just offer it up as a vote every time. And and just to just to make it official, I guess, I would like council to yay or nay on the, on the current CAC members that are on that have all been working very hard. Um, can I get a motion to accept all the CAC members that are on? I'll make a motion to accept the current CAC members and new members. I'll second that motion. Any discussion here, Council? All in favor of the current CAC members say aye. 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 Anybody that's opposed say nay in your name, please. Thank you. And uh, from going on, going forward, I will uh, I'll make sure you guys vote on all future ones. And the other committees and commissions do not have that requirement, just so you know. Um, that's all I've got. Um, I've got one um, asking council and mayor. Um, I was approached by uh, Roslyn Fire Department. Um, we have one section left on the transmission line, which is um, about 900 feet left to FireWise. Um, up at the transmission line, it's the last ten. It's the probably the worst part left. Um, it's quite thick. We didn't get to it last year during COVID when they were up there. And so, um, what's your thoughts of um, directing the Firewise crew back up there this spring or summer prior to fire season to finish that last bit? Yeah, let's make sure we get the engineer and and public works up there to review that area and make sure we know what we're doing before we send the crew up. But I I, I like your thinking there, Jeff. No, that'd be great. Chris and I, or the fire department and myself have discussed it and asked if I would bring it up. Um, and, and we are planning a trip, I believe, with uh, the public works crew and um, our committee to all go up and sort of look at what we've done. And uh, so we're all on the same page um, when we head back up there. So that'd be great if we can do so. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have that happen. And then, and then you guys can make that decision. As Damn, to we'll bring, forward on that. I'll bring some pictures have... back of the line. Thank you. You know, I had, I had one more thing there, guys. I'm sorry. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of public uh, written communications. And, of course, last week I said that we would reply to them all. And then, you know, and staff's been very diligent and excellent at doing this. 
but there's been some kickback from uh, some people that feel that they're writing to you all and myself and not staff. And so while some of the correspondents appreciate staff's response, others would prefer to hear from council. <coughs> So I'm, I'm kind of going to, we're going to take it on a, a letter by letter, email by email basis, but I'm, I've am i kind of told staff to, to hold off on response unless it's specific to staff duties. And if it's specific to a council question or council response, you know, I, I'll probably reach out to you guys and say, you know, please respond. Or like today, Joe uh, was responded to by Jeff Adams without replying all, which was excellent. And, then, and Joe replied to him to, to everybody, which is fine as long as as long as the respondent is not replying to the council and just re replying to the the person that's uh, communicating with us. That that's how I expect it to happen. Um, if nobody has anything to say, you know, I would assume that the citizen would probably come to the next meeting and wonder why nothing was said, and and we can address that as as those things arise. But I just want you guys to know that that I'm going to have staff uh, lessen the response, if any, uh, to these written communications. Thank you. The only thing Leah, I'd like to add is... Leah. <clears throat> Go ahead, Leah. Oh, just going to say, uh, it's a great time to pull weeds. So if, uh, you know, maybe we can, I can put together something on like invasive species, um, if anyone is interested in helping or, you know, if you're in want to help Rosalind pull some weeds is what I would say. Well Thanks. said. Thanks. The only thing I want to add is I want to end on a little bit of an upbeat tonight. Um, I've been approached by the city of Cleelum's mayor to be part of a committee. It's not defined yet. Um, we've had a couple meetings already informally, but about a community rec center that's been talked about for a number of years, um, part of the Suncadia donation of some land. It is beginning to get some traction and move forward. They've done a lot of things. I don't have a lot of detail on it yet, but uh, Roswin will get a say in this as well too. Um, and it'll be used by the four upper county communities, uh, Clay Elm, Roslyn, South Clay Elm, and then Sun Katie as well. So there's gonna be a lot more of that. There's gonna be some, some town hall meetings and things like that as we move forward. Um, they're working out some of the logistics. So I look forward to some great news going forward with that for our community, which we need a rec center, I think. It's uh, very well needed. And Mayor McGowan's doing a heck of a job with uh, the former mayor of Leon as well. I met with them. So hopefully some really good news with that coming forward in the next month or so. Um, they were hoping to make a presentation last night at their council meeting. They were unable to get it put together in time. So they're still putting the structure together right now. So hopefully in the next two weeks, maybe four weeks, I'll have a lot more detail to share with you. And then how we can get our input in uh, on this future development for Upper County. Great news, Tom. Thank you. Well, I guess as mayor again, I guess I do have a couple more here. I don't know why I got to make myself a list here. But uh, our fire department has uh, started the process with uh, Representative Schreier's office about uh, applying for some monies there. And I myself have reached out to Senator Murray's office, uh, the, the Yakima uh, person that uh, Rachel or Raquel, excuse me. And uh, so those kind of communications are, are ongoing and uh, and they know the projects we're looking for. And uh, and I put the transmission line as the project to Senator Murray's office. So, you know, at, le at least we're in the, in the ear, I guess, a little bit. I just have a couple. Uh, sorry about my film. The filming this week, uh, I didn't start recording until Rhonda, so I do apologize. And then my camera did die halfway through, so it w it'll look a little chopped up. But I swear I've never edited any council meetings. It's just that's just how it's gonna look. So I, I do apologize for that. Um, so um, regarding the LSP and reading these comments from 2018 from uh, Conservation Northwest. Um, I was wondering when we do update this LSP, if we have to add conversation, Conservation Northwest and Sun Katie to LSP, I, f I feel that it uh, dilutes the process with our CAC and with the uh, staff that we have. Um, I. I don't see it beneficiary benefit be, benefiting the city 
having outside sources telling us what to do with our own land, even though, because they have, they're not really doing anything to help us with our land. Uh, they would, would want to put money into helping us uh, preserve our forest. That's one thing, but really we foot the bill, we volunteer, and we put the time into it. Uh, I'm just shocked that uh, the LSP is held so greatly by two other entities that really don't help with the rough at all. So that's just my two cents no, no, with updating speak, LSP. I speak to that real quick. Yeah. Let me speak to that real quick. Uh, the, uh, the LSP requires that we inform them of the change. So after the RFQ and after we have an expert help us draft, you know, uh, amendments, if you will, uh, and then council decides on the amendments after CSC has uh, advised us and you guys, um, then we just tell them the changes that we intend to do or we have done. So they have to they have to know, but they don't get a vote. Okay, that's fine too. Uh, I just I, I I just see it again just diluting our processes when I, I don't think they need we need to be in that. So, okay, that's good. If we can change the format of it, even better. Actually, well, that, could, that could be part of the amendment, too. Okay. The, the LSP actually requires written, written consent of Suncadia and Conservation Northwest. And that's what I want to change. And that's what I think we should change. Well, I mean, but you'd have to get their consent to change it is all I'm saying. Because that's required. I, I'll but, have to look that up, Kathy. I'm not exactly sure if it requires written consent per se. Oh yeah, it we'll, says we'll, that. I'll, I'll send it to you. But is well, the is the LSP? There's differing opinions here. I was going to say, isn't the LSP just something we? It's a, a, a something that we reference to go off of. It's not something that's set in stone that we have to go off of. So that would be changes that we could make in it. It was a condition when the land was was uh, um, turned over to the city. Um, it was a condition of the acquisition that that we follow the LSP, and the LSP actually has a place in it where it says changes to the LSP have to be there's it require written consent of Suncadia and um, conser uh, initially Ridge, but now Conservation Northwest. But the LSP, as I read it, and I think there's just difference in opinions on how people read this, is that we have to ensure that we provide at least a 60-day comment period to Ridge's successors, Conservation Northwest and Suncadia. Um, but there's there's just differing opinions um, on whether they have to provide, whether they get to a pr provide approval on any updates or whether they merely need to provide in writing if they consent to the changes that they provide that. And that all what it, the city needs to provide is the opportunity to comment, much like any other pu public process that requires public comment. It's not necessarily acted on. It's just the act of um, giving the time and space for the public to provide their input. Well, I'll, I'll send you all the, the little in the LSP that says written written consents required, and then you can see what you make of that. But um, it, it is in there. So updating the LSP, maybe we can update that part of it. Yeah, no, and so we, we will. The, the attorney has already read that portion, and she has said that if, if the council so chooses that we could amend that portion, um, she has been unable to find anything in the covenants or anything that would say that 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 is, and it, it is a comment. So they have 60 days to comment. They can oppose the changes, uh, but ultimately it is up to the council what they want to adopt for the new LSP, according to our attorney. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, on another note, um, I'd like to do this publicly to Catherine Cook. I, uh, I wanted to apologize. I've already sent her an email on the assumption that I thought she was at the meeting, which I thought was January, but because of COVID, it was a crazy year. It was actually July that we met with Marty or discussed with Marty at the USDA loan. Um, and that meeting was driven by Kathy. So my assumption was she was on the phone call. And I, I would like to publicly apologize that I assumed she was on the call, which apparently she was not. And uh, I just want to put that on the record that I've apologized for that. And um, I hope she accepts that, um, that assumption I thought she was on that phone call with us. 
Thank you, Jeff. Um, no offense taken, but thanks for the clarification. Yes, I, I apologize. I thought you were on there. And just like I said in my email to you, I, I apologize. Anything else from before I I'll make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned, everybody. Meeting is adjourned, everybody. Thank you. Everybody.